hello, my name is Matt Wright, and I'm coming to you from the craziest place in the world, Emma Rose Wright's Playroom. This place is a disaster. Hi, I'm Lamb Chop. Today, we're going to learn about how Gauss's Law and Coulomb's Law are connected. So from physics one, sorry, from physics two, we remember that Gauss's law is the integral around a closed surface of the electric field dotted into the area is equal to the charge enclosed over epsilon naught. Okay, so where does this come from? So Coulomb's law says that for a given charge, the electric field is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over r squared times r hat. Now, of course, it's script r, but let's just imagine that we're putting this charge at the origin. Right, so we're actually going to put the charge at the origin, so script R is really just R. It's a choice, right? Now, if we take this in and we plug it in here for E, we get some really interesting things happening. So the integral is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over R squared R hat dotted into dA equals Q enclosed over epsilon naught. Okay? So the way we can think about this is that we have our charge right here, right? And we've drawn a Gaussian surface, which is a sphere around there. And that Gaussian surface has a radius of R. Okay, so we drew a spherical... Gaussian surface around this point, and it's centered directly around that, around that point in the center. Okay, so what's the area element here, dA? What is dA? Well, first off, it's going to point in the same direction as the radius. So dA is going to point out, right, r hat. So it's going to be the, the surface area element. So that's going to be r squared sine theta d theta d phi. So when I go ahead and I multiply that in here for dA, I get the following expression. The integral around a closed loop, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q, over r squared. Of course, it's going to be r hat dotted into r hat because they both point out, so that just gives me 1. r squared sine theta d theta d phi. Okay, an interesting thing happens here. The r squareds cancel out. And I'm left with 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, the integral there's a Q at the top, Q sine theta d theta d phi, right? And if I do this integral, again, we're going to do the, pot, the theta integral from 0 to pi and the phi integral from 0 to 2 pi, right? Encompassing this is the all around the enclosed shell. If I do this integral, it's going to give me 4 pi. So if I come over here, I get Q over 4 pi epsilon naught times 4 pi. The 4 pi's cancel, and I'm left with the following wonderful expression. Q 
over epsilon naught equals Q over epsilon naught. So it seems like I have a proof. But I pulled a fast one on you. Because when we look at Coulomb's law, sorry, when we look at Gauss's law, we always make the note that this is true for no matter what surface you use. It's true if you're using a sphere, but it's also true if you're using whatever surface. And so what I showed you was that if I had one single point charge at the center, it goes through and shows that Coulomb's law and Gauss's law are connected. All right, so we got to unpack a few things to really prove, to really, really prove um, Gauss's law. All right, so let's first think a little bit deeper about what the electric field is and where it comes from. Okay, imagine I have a charge distribution. some charge distribution here in space. So these are charges, okay? Now, if I go and I look at these charges, this charge distribution, and I look at a micro with a magnifying glass, what it really looks like is a whole bunch of charges put in, um, put together, right? And so if I care about the electric field at this point, point P, right, then what I could do is find the electric field from this point, find the electric field from this charge, find the electric field from that charge, and add them up, right? We call that the principle of superposition. That E total at point P is equal to E1 plus E2 plus E3 Right, so, and where I include all my charges. So, at the most fundamental, at the most fundamental here, each E, each electric field in that principle of superposition is coming from a point charge. So if I can prove that that point charge follows Gauss's law, then, and I know that that point charge can follow Gauss's law and so on, then when I add them all up via the principle of superposition, they're all going to follow Gauss's law. So we're just going to deal with proving it for one point charge, and then we're going to go from there. Okay, imagine if you will, I have a point charge right there, nice big dot. And I have some surface which looks not spherical. I drew it in two dimensions here just because it's easier to visualize in two dimensions, but this is really a three dimensional thing, right? It's wrapping all the way around the point charge. Okay, so, hmm, what to do? All right, so if I try to prove, if I try to prove Gauss's law, here I have a distance to the edge of the surface from the point charge. Okay, so now here I have an area. Now the area is not, it, it, it points out, right? It points out from the surface. It points out from the surface there. And I'll argue that the area is made up of all three components, right? It's gonna be made up of a radial component, DAR, 
right? And then there might be a phi component and a theta component, right? So that I can write my dA as equal to DAR, R hat, plus some crap theta hat, plus some crap phi hat. I don't care about that because I know that when I do E dot area, right, my electric field from this point charge is going to be pointing along the radial direction. So when I do this dot product, I get an R hat dot R hat on this term. So this is going to be E D A R, right? But when I do R hat dot theta hat and R hat dot phi hat, I get zero. So these terms go away and I don't even have to think about them. And I'm just left with having to do that integral E D R. E D A R. Okay. Now, of course, I got to do it around this whole enclosed shell. But this DAR in spherical coordinates is R squared sine theta d theta d phi. And the E for a point charge is Q over R squared. There's a 4 pi epsilon naught here, right? these r squareds are going to cancel. And when I do this integral here, I get a 4 pi. So that gives me q over epsilon naught. So that says that if I have a point charge, it doesn't matter the shape of the the shape of the enclosed surface doesn't matter. I always just get that charge over epsilon naught when I integrate the E dot dA over the outside of the surface. Of course, if I can do that for one charge, right, and I know that my whole electric field is given by just the sum of all of these of all of these electric fields, each due to a point charge, and I integrate dot dA, and I integrate here E1 dot dA plus E2 dot dA plus dot dot dot, this is just going to give me Q1 over epsilon naught plus that integral is going to give me q2 over epsilon naught and dot, 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 so on. So what I get is I get all the charges inside. So when I say the charge enclosed, what I'm really saying is the number of charges that are inside your enclosed area. So this is now absolutely magnificent. I have the following amazingly beautiful equation. E dot dA around enclosed shell is equal to the charge enclosed over epsilon naught. This is Gauss's law, and it is directly connected to Coulomb's law. So which one's more fundamental? Well, we start with Coulomb's law because it's well, how we kind of think when we're thinking about forces and how things interact. But if they're equivalent, why couldn't Gauss's law be the more fundamental thing? All right, and so this is great. We call this the integral form. But there's another way of looking at this, right? So this here, if it's the charge, we can rewrite this as the charge density times a volume element, right? Just saying that the charge density times the volume gives me the charge. And we can apply Green's theorem here, which says that if I have an integral over a closed surface dot dA, then this is going to be equal to the divergence of that vector integrated over a volume, 
right? So this is Green's theorem, or the divergence theorem. So if I look at these two integrals, they're both integrating over the same volume. So what must be true is that the divergence of E has to be 1 over epsilon naught times the charge density. So this is the integral form of Gauss's law, and this is the differential form of Gauss's law. Right? These are the fundamental equation, or the fundamental equation of electrostatics.